Hello, I'm going to show you the Pegasus Reach Search software. This is part two in a two-part series, but you don't need to go back to part one. This video stands by itself perfectly well. In part one, I tell you about some of the terminology that's being used, like model building, model testing, how a revolution in astrology is beginning, where we have ways to figure out how astrology really works. That's some background information. In this video, I'm going to show you how you do the research with a particular program, which is the Pegasus research software. The Pegasus research software is actually comes in two parts. It's the Pegasus program, which in American dollars, it costs $100 and the research option for $75. So the total is 175, still not free, still not extremely inexpensive, but much less expensive, more powerful, more elegant, more fun than what we've had before. We just came out with this research option Last month in June 2017, I'm making this video in July 2017, we're very excited about it. We've had a lot of requests for this. Um, so we're making this available. What is it we're making available? 85,000 chart data. That includes nine, about 19,000 famous people with AA accuracy, means from a birth certificate, the Gawkelin database, thousands of other charts of, of companies and other things fabulous research fe features, and these tutorial videos to help you learn about it and how to use it. Um, and the idea is that you can continue to use whatever software you use. So if you have the WinStar program, use it. If you use online astrology software, continue to use it. You can get the Pegasus research just to do your research. So especially if you're a professional astrologer and you give lectures or you write articles or you just want to make discoveries, you, as we said in that uh, first part in the previous video, um, you can go beyond cherry picking and really develop your ideas. It's so exciting. Um, now, if you if you have Kepler, if that's the software you use, you can get the database for fifty dollars because Kepler already has the research features, but doesn't have all the the data. And if you have Sirius, you already have all this. So you you have the data, you have the research features. So <laughs> let's start using it. And in this video, um, I. I make it clearer. I'm going to focus on the most important research features, more down to earth than the other videos. So if you have Kepler or series, you probably want to watch this as well. Okay, so th these are the kinds of research that you can do and that I want to discuss. Five kinds of research of natal charts. So I have them listed. I'm not going to repeat them all now, um, but we'll go over these five. One kind of compatibility research and two kinds of forecasting. So I'm just giving you a preview of what we're going to be discussing. And just as an example, this very first one, Astro Signature Research, that alone is fantastic. It changes everything. You can really figure out how things work. Uh, the technical terminology that research experts use for it is it uses something called intensity sampling. You don't have to worry about the fancy terminology. It's really simple to use and helps really reveal a lot about how the astrology really works. So anyway, we will go over all this. But before we do, let me first familiarize you with the data entry screen. I also cover this in the introductory videos um, to the Sirius software. It's the same in Kepler and Pegasus. But I want to do it here as related to research. So let me show you the data entry screen. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through how to do these different kinds of research. OK because I want to make sure you understand how the data is categorized, how you can find charts, uh, browse through things, and, and uh, it's fun. Let me show you. So if I go over here to new, and let's just clear all entries and start a new list. Well, first thing is, um, suppose I'm interested in the astrologer Dane Ridgiar. I can just type his name, and as you type, the names show up. But what if I don't want to see all 85,000 charts? I just want to see the astrologers. I can click uh, over here under File to Read, and I can select a category. You can think of this as a category, or you could think of it as a file, the data you want. And suppose I want to just see what astrologers are in the database. So I can go over here to Counselor, Psychologist, Astrologer. I get a pop-up list of categories. I can select astrologer. So there are many hundreds of categories 
and within the general category subcategories for you to select the data you want. Now I'll just click OK. And if I start typing A, I'm seeing only astrologers. So Sally Abbott and Tracy Abbott and Joan Abel, these are all astrologers. Now, let me show you this. The Get Group of Charts button. This little button here, you can overlook it. It's wonderful. You click on this button and it allows you to browse through the information. Now, I've got astrologers as my category. Um, suppose I want only the astrologers who have AA accuracy, only from a birth certificate, not the ones that, you know, we're not as sure of the birth time. Well, right down here, accuracy. I can click on this accuracy button, change it to only charts selected below, click on AA, and watch what will happen. Over here, it tells me there are 657 astrologers in the database. When I click OK, there are only 169 with AA data. Okay, I, I know I'm talking fast, but you can replay this, you can pause it. I just want to give you an overview, an overview of all the research. If I go into detail with all this, it'll take hours and hours. I want to give you a basic idea of what the software is about. There are, are many thousands of charts. They're put into categories. So you can find them. There are ways that you can pull out only the AA data. You can also restrict to a time range. Down here, I can click from, and now it's showing only the data of astrologers, since that's my category, with AA data, since I selected that, born 1950 or later, and there are only 50 of those. And there they are. So research is a lot of things. Sometimes it just means you just want to browse through data. You just want to pick out some charts. You just want to explore some things. You're not doing a very controlled or... Um, you know, a serious, heavy kind of research. You're exploring information. So these are some of the ways that you can do it. There's also a search names here. If you know you're looking for somebody whose name is Bill and he's an astrologer, but you can't remember the last name, <clears throat> you can type this in, click find. Well, with my restricted list of only 50, there's probably no bills in here at all, but I can click on find and yeah, it's not, not finding anything. Let me just put a capital B um, and click on find. And there are the names that, that ha uh, begin with B, uh, Barbara, first or last name beginning with B. Um, anyway, you get the idea. You can search uh, at the beginning of the name, anywhere in the name, just to help you find the data. Well, I'm just want to give you some ideas on how you access, search through things, and find charts you might want to look for. Uh, also, another interesting thing here is that when you click on a name, I highlight Alexandre Barbeau, and then it gives me the notes. These are the notes we have, and if that data was imported from the online Astro Data Bank, there's a link to the data right here. So I can click on the link, it'll open up my browser, and I've got the data for Andre Barbeau. I can read the source notes. There's very often a link to Wikipedia. If the person is famous enough to be in Wikipedia, there'll be a link to that. So it's fantastic. Um, how you can get to the online information with just a click. So those are some of the basic things you can do in the screen. You could check whatever astrologers you're interested in, click OK, and then read those in. I'll click OK, and now it's added all those charts to my list. Um, so that's the basic idea. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. I wanted to tell you about the categories of data. Oh, the My Data. Let me tell you about that. If you go down here to the files to read and you click on select a category, on the left is the 85,000 charts that, that come with the program um, in categories. And on the right is the My Data. And you can make up to 1,000 different categories. You can call them categories. You can think of them as files. They're not physically separate files. But some astrologers are used to thinking of their uh, their clients as being in a separate file. So you can think of them as files or categories, and you can name these. Okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint. 
make sure I'm covering all these ideas. I showed you the link to the online Astro Data Bank, which also, by the way, is right here in, the, in this data entry screen. Um, so I've got an astrologer here, Irene Dietrich, um, not familiar with her at all, but there she is, born in 1959, and I can click on the link here as well, so you don't have to go to get a group. As soon as you read in a chart, you've got the link to the information, and there's the information about her. A uh, German astrologer and psychic healer based in Berlin. Um, source notes, etc. So the really famous people will have a lot of notes and a link to the Astro Data Bank. So if you're reading in, you know, the president or prime minister or a famous actor or musician, there's going to be lots of biographical information. Um, and with the link to the Wikipedia article right from um, Astro Data Bank, you'll see the link. It's really wonderful. A couple of clicks, you're right into all of this online information about the people. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you about um, how you the, the how the data is organized, how it's categorized, how you how you find the data, and what things look like in the data entry screen to make sure you're familiar with that. I'm talking very fast because in this video I'm giving an overview of research in the Pegasus research software and I'm going to try to keep this down to a half hour. We'll see how long it takes. Um, okay, and you can replay it, pause it, you know, go over it again. All right. Now, two notes about the data collection. It's constantly being improved. I'm making this video in July 2017. By next year, we'll be having more regular updates to it. We update it about once a year right now. Um, uh, and also, send us your corrections and, and, and updates that you have. When I click Done and to get back to the main screen, when you go to Help, you'll see this menu item, Submit Data to Online Astro Data Bank. I just added this a few days ago. So probably if you are watching this video um, you know, in the summer of 2017 or even autumn or winter, you may not see it. But if you run the free update program, you'll see it. Um, if you're wondering why it doesn't appear in your program, that would be why. Um, and you, if you have corrections, new data, uh, let us know and participate with the thousands of other people helping build this information. And basically, here's the information you would send, and you can email it to, to the Astro Data Bank. You can also send it to us here at astrosoftware.com so that both of us get it. We can, we can do the updates for those improvements. Okay, now let's talk about the research. What kind of research can we do? Um, what we can do is... Um, this. These are the kinds of research we can do. Five kinds of research on natal charts. Each one of these is fantastic. The first one, for example, astro signature research. I use it all the time. More and more astrologers are using this very exciting way to find out what something means. What does Aries mean? Is Aries really pioneering? Is Taurus really stubborn? Is Chiron really the wounded healer? What does Venus square Neptune mean? What does Venus and Pisces in the third house square Neptune mean? You can pull out the charts that have this, and if your theory doesn't match this data of the people who have this the strongest, your theory doesn't work. That's the bottom line. Uh, you don't have to have control groups and all this stuff. You, you can use your astrological expertise to test your ideas and improve them. Very exciting. And then there's all these other research methods as well. I'll sh show you how it's done. Um, in in the uh, in the software, and the there's one kind of compatibility and two kinds of forecasting. So the basic kinds of things we do in astrology, natal charts, compatibility, and forecasting, you can research all of these in the Pegasus Research software. Now I'm not going to list everything on this slide. We're going to cover this in a minute. Um, okay, now le okay, let's talk about the intensity. Uh, sampling. Uh, I just mentioned examples of what you can do with, with the astro signature and what's called intensity sampling. It's a fancy word used by experts in research methods that just means you're picking out the charts of people who have the most of something. 
So if you want to know what Aries means, you go into the software and you tell it, give me the people that have the most Aries. Let me show you how you do it. It's really simple. What you do is you click on this research button and then you'll see these research options. If you have Kepler or Sirius, there's a few more buttons in here. The most important research features are, are here in the Pegasus research software. There are other ones that are not used as often that are also in Kepler and Sirius. But let's go to Astro Signature. And there are some Astro Signatures already created. But if I if, let's say I want to uh, know what Aries means or Taurus or Gemini. Uh, let's say I want to know what Aquarius means. There are a lot of debates about Aquarius. Some people say it's a fixed air sign ruled by Saturn. Some people say it's ideological. Some people say, no, it's ruled by Uranus. It's inventive. Well, we can argue this and debate it from here till kingdom come. But this will help decide. Um, so what we do is we go to New Search or Astro Signature and we'll just call it Zodiac Sign because I can change it later from Aquarius to something else. I'm not going to model it or make it the same as something else. It's a new search. It tells me it created it. And then all you do is you select what you want over here. I want Zodiac Sign. I want Sun in Aquarius. You can give it a certain number of points. Let's give it, oh, five points. And then I can insert a new item. It tells me it inserted a new item. And I could do Moon and insert another item. And I could select Ascendant and insert another item. I'll just do a couple more. And I'll scroll down to Ruler of the Ascendant, which is down here somewhere, Ascendant Ruler. I'll insert a new item. This will be the last one. Uh, I'll put Mercury. I'll give it fewer points because I think Mercury is not as important as Sun, Moon, Ascendant, Ruler of the Ascendant. And I just build my list. Now, uh, I save it. I save it. I, you know, I could continue and add Venus, Mars, Jupiter. I can say that I only want certain accuracy. Right now it's set to AA accuracy. I can say A or better. I could just do all charts, whatever I want to do. Um, and then you just click Begin Analysis, and it does it. Oh, one more thing, you could change the category. If I do only astrologers with AA data, we found out that there's, a, what, 100 and something of them. It'll just do those. It won't take so long. If I do the entire database, it could take 10 or 15 minutes, something like that. And you wait, and then the results come back as a listing of who has it the strongest. And what experts and research methods will tell you is that if the people with the most Aries don't fit your theory, your theory doesn't work. There's technical reasons for this. It's called a regression model. Don't worry about all that fancy terminology. But specifically for astrology, there are reasons why this works. It doesn't necessarily work in other kinds of research, but it works here to tell you if your ideas work. So by looking at the people who have the most Aries, we see if it's really true. And that's how you do it. It's that simple. I'm just giving you a basic idea. I have other videos that go into the research. The Astro, I have a whole video on just the Astro Signature research um, alone. So there's lots of detailed information. Here I want to give you an overview and, and let you feel confident to do this. Just click on Astro Signature, make an Astro Signature, put what you want in there, click on Begin Analysis, and you'll get the results. And you can find out what each sign means or at least see if your ideas about it are working. There's a lot of talk about Chiron, the wounded healer, or Ceres, or anything you want to know. Not anything, but most things you would want to know, you can research. And, uh, okay, I talked about this, the principle behind it. Um, there's technical, statistical reasons why this works, which we don't have to bother with. Just we know it works. And here's how you do it. You create the Astro Signature, and you click on Begin Analysis. I just showed you that. Um, now, what you do is you get a listing, and I think I have a listing. Here it is. You'll get a listing like this. So for Aries, Hen Henry Landrieu uh, has the most Aries. Prince Leopold is next. David Steele, a politician. Brian Shaw, a basketball player. And you read the biographies. There were also some other people that there was not very much biographical information, but these are the top people 
that we have biographical information. We just click on that link to Astro Data Bank, then click on the link to Wikipedia, and then Google it, and and then you just interpret the chart any way you want to. Make any argument you want to. Anything you want to do. This kind of research does not restrict you. you use all of your creativity and all of your astrological expertise to make your argument about what Aries means. The reason why this is so powerful is because you are not picking the data. And we have the strongest people with Aries. They must fit our theory. So that's how you do it. It's really very simple, and it moves astrology into the 21st century information age. If you're not into statistics and research methods, maybe this doesn't sound so impressive to you. Like, what's the big deal? Just because the software picked it out, um, that's more important than my clients? Well, believe it or not, yes, it is. <laughs> your, your clients and, and everything you do is also extremely important. But the data is not cherry-picked. This is the information age, and it's the most intense examples of, of it. Um, so it's a fast, quick way to figure out how things work without having to collect tons of data and do control groups and all that stuff. You can immediately start figuring it out. Um, now, what are some of the good things about this? It's easy to run the analysis. I just showed it to you. You can eliminate ideas that don't work. You can come up with new insights. Uh, and you can use this for exploratory research and to confirm a theory. So once you decide Aries means such and such, such and such, then look at the next five people in the list and the next five people. And if you can make a good argument, now you have very convincing support for your idea. Very convincing. Uh, and we're really figuring out what works. And that's what's exciting, not to impress other people, but to just figure out how astrology works. Some of the negatives, what's not so great about this, it takes time to read the biographies. This research takes time because you get the listing, fine. Now you have to click on it, read about it. You have to think about it. Number two, you have to be an expert astrologer to figure it out. Well, that's not bad for most of you watching this because you are astrologers. But this research cannot be done by non-astrologers or people who know just a little bit. It's the really great astrologers who can look at this data and make sense out of it by all of the techniques and sensitivity that they have. Uh, and thirdly, there's no, quote, proof of astrology from this. This is qualitative research to, to begin testing the model, as I talk about in the first video in this uh, series. Um, and you can confirm ideas, but it's qualitative. It's, if somebody's a cynic of astrology, it's not going to convince them of anything. But we don't care about cynics of astrology. You know, I don't. I just want to figure out how astrology works. And this is how models are built in modern times. These are the kind of research tools people use, and we have them in astrology now. Okay, that's the first of the five kinds of uh, research you can do on natal charts. Second kind is data visualization. You may think, if you're not familiar with what researchers do nowadays, that it's all about statistics, and you've heard about statistical significance, and you have to have control groups, and all this, you know, very rigid stuff. But actually, what's going on these days in a lot of research is visualizing the data. Here, I'm looking at Mercury-Uranus angles of astrologers. So I took the astrologers, what was it, 600 and something astrologers in the database, and I use this feature in the software to graph the distance between Mercury and Uranus. So instead of jumping in and saying, oh, I think astrologers have Mercury square Uranus or Mercury conjunct Uranus, you can explore the data. And down here, you can group it. So this groups it in every three degrees, zero to three, three to six. And you can see the patterns. And you can notice peaks. There's a peak here at 120 degrees. This one right here, the trine peaks. But this weird one here is peaking at 153 degrees. Well, you know what? 153 degrees is very close to a triceptile aspect. So if you're into minor aspects, oops, this is interesting. This peak here, a little after 102, that's a biceptile. Could it be that Mercury and Uranus in septile aspects is common for astrologers? Is it possible? Now, this is really mind-boggling. I 
do a form of astrology known as vibrational astrology. And we believe that Mercury, Uranus in seventh, har these are called seventh harmonic, these septile aspects, inclines to astrology. Can you imagine this? So you may be skeptical, maybe you don't believe in minor aspects, but anyway, it's fun to explore the data. And by visualizing it, you get a better feeling than just having a bunch of numbers. So this is a big deal in modern research, is to visualize what's going on. Let me quickly show you how you do this in the software. So if you want to do it yourself, you can do it. You go to uh, exploratory research, this one here, exploratory research, and then you can say something like, I want Mercury and Uranus. I want angular distance. You can also do harmonics or one to 360 degrees, a bunch of different options here. And then you click OK. It does it very fast. And there's the distribution. This is called bar chart. But over here, you can click on line graph. And now you have the graph that I just showed you. And you can I have it on 60 sectors. And there's the same graph that I just showed you. And you can play around with this and, and you can see what's going on. OK, so let me just get out of this. I showed you how to do that. Back to my PowerPoint. So that's the same exact graph. I just showed you how to do it. Um, so this is exploratory visualization. It's so much fun, so exciting. This is how research is done in the 21st century. It's not all this fuddy duddy, you know, just number crunching statistical significance. That's extremely important. That's sort of the end game. That's the, the, the um, you know, that's the, the ultimate thing. Um, but there's all these steps that are exciting that can lead you up to being able to do that kind of research. Okay, um, now on this um, slide, it's the same graph I just showed you. I just circled in purple where the septile, biceptile and triceptile, all above average. I also noticed that the 36 degrees called the decile, the 108 which is called a tridecile, and the quintile, 72 degrees, are average or above average. Actually, the biquintile is a little bit lower. So I'm looking at families of aspects. I drew in red here the average. It tells me the average score is 1.667. So I drew a red line in there. Um, and these are the kinds of things. I'm just circling things and highlighting things to show you um, how you can look at this information. Now, another thing I can do is I could also remember back on this screen. Let me go back to the Pegasus program. Remember here, I could click on harmonic. I could also click on harmonic and click on OK Calculate. And now I've got the harmonics. Um, and I could see that the third harmonic, the trine is high, the seventh harmonic is high. Um, and let's see, tenth harmonic. It's kind of confirming what I thought might be going on uh, by looking at it in a, in a different way as a harmonic. Now, let me show you one more thing. Um, I can click on this daily transits distribution, and I can say yes or difference. This will show me the difference between what the astrologers have for harmonics and what happens in the sky randomly. So it'll, it'll calculate the Mercury-Uranus angle every day for the time range that the astrologers were born, compare it to the astrologers so that we can see what the difference is. Um, so, and, and there it is. So it's showing me that the third harmonic, which means trines, is above average. The line goes up above this middle. It's above average. Seven and, um, let's see, what did I do here? I've got seven is above average. Uh, Ten is above average. Fifteen is above average. So I'm getting these scores that confirm what I found before. Okay, so I'm just showing you different ways to analyze the data. There's the bar graph. There's the, uh, the differences between them. Um, so data visualization. It's the great thing about it. It's easy to run. You come up with new insights. 
uh, you can use it for exploratory research. You can also confirm theories. So if you're expecting something and you have some new data, you could test it and see if it works. Uh, negatives about data visualization, if you're using what we call training data, like we are here, we're just exploring, it's easy to see things that will not be true with new data, which is sometimes called test data, right? I mean, obvious. Some of you may look at this and you go, oh, I don't believe Mercury Uranus is in, excuse me, in seventh harmonic aspects in astrologers, doesn't make sense to you. Um, it was just a random noise in the data. Maybe it is. So if you're, you know, you're developing ideas, you're visualizing what the data looks like, you're seeing if it makes sense, and then you'd have to have some new data to test it on. Um, so it's easy to see things that may not be true. Um, but that does not mean you do not use these things. Professors at universities, research institutes, uh, economics analysis, people working for big corporations to figure out patterns, they use methods like this. These are important methods to use. Nothing's perfect, but it helps you. It's better than just randomly looking at charts. Uh, well, in, which is also important. It's important to have your own personal experience, but in addition, these things are what are used today, and you can now do them in your astrological research. Again, like astro signatures, it requires an astrologer to do the research, and again, the results are qualitative. Um, they're not as definitive as research that would produce numbers. Um, but it's important for building your model and improving your ideas. This is how real research is done. Step by step, stone by stone, you, you sculpt away and find out how it works. That's how research is really done. It's not all about hypothesis tests with statistical significance. Now, you can use the, um, uh, oh, one more thing is, if you're interested in just say, say, say you don't need an astro signature, you just want to know what the sun signs of astrologers are, um, then you can just use a feature in this software for specific astro factors right here. Click on specific astro factors, click on signs, there's a pop-up menu, say you want all 12 signs, and I've got the sun, suppose I want to see the sun, sun sign, Oh, I've got accuracy AA. You know what? Um, that's why my results before were a little bit different from, from what I wanted. Let me go over here and set the accuracy to all charts because sun sign won't change much um, depending on accuracy. Let me do all 650 people. Let me go to specific astro factor. Go to signs, all 12 signs. Oh, here's the accuracy setting right here. I was jumping all over the ways. You can click on your accuracy setting. All charts is what I have now. Sun signs, click on calculate. It calculates the sun sign for all the people. And here's the button for graph. And now I have a graph. And very interestingly, astrologers have the sun in Leo more than any other sign. Next most common is Aquarius. Maybe that doesn't make sense to you. But that's what the data says. Maybe it's just a random fluctuation. But it's interesting to know that out of 657, I think it was, astrologers, uh, Leo is the most common sun sign. It's interesting to explore the data. So these are all forms of exploratory research and seeing what's in the data. Now, if you already have a theory and you have new data, this can be what we call a hypothesis test to see if what you expected is true. All right, so here I show the graph. Oh, wait a minute, where is my graph? There it is. Here's my graph um, that I just showed you. I, I had done this before and pasted it in. I also ran it for scientists. Uh, these are the scientists from the Galcon database and these are their sun signs, very low in Sagittarius, a little bit higher in Pisces, very different. Now, these results perhaps don't make sense to you, but they make sense to me because in our astro signature research, and I have a video on every zodiac sign, and in the video where we do the astro signature research, that intensity sampling for Leo, 
uh, we found that the people with the most Leo are not necessarily proud and arrogant, and they're not, they don't tend to be actors, but they have an interest in personal development. One of the people with the most Leo is Jean Piaget, the child psychologist, who studied how we develop personally. And what does an astrologer do? He, an astrologer finds your unique potential. It's a very Leo kind of activity. So this research here confirms what we found from the astro signature research. And what we're finding in this research is that the way astrology works is a little bit different from what we thought. We were on track, but we're finding out it's a little bit different. Leo has more to do with concern about developing as an individual that can lead to pride. It can lead to being self-centered, but it's only one manifestation. So this research is opening up new doors and it's not based on cherry picked data. It's based on solid ideas developed in modern times to figure out how things work. So we're really doing model testing. It's so exciting to be able to do these things. I'm showing you some of the research features that you can use. Now, another thing you can do, the first thing I showed you, the Astro Signature Research, you can do it to see who has the most Aries or the most Taurus or Venus square Neptune, whatever you want to do. You could also look at the charts of groups of people, like say astrologers or musicians or anything, scientists, whatever you want, and see if you can see what's common to those charts. So this is astro signatures used for a behavior or trait. The uh, technical terminology for this, what research methods experts would say, is that what I showed you is the first type of research is where we build an astro signature for the astrological variable, that's a predictor variable, and now you can use astro signatures for the outcome variable, which would be a behavior or personality trait. So even though astrology may not work by a causal mechanism, we still call it a predictor variable. Anyway, uh, just thought I'd mention some of the more technical research terminology for this. And I wrote an article some years ago where I did that. And here's the article, Astro Signatures in the Galcoin Data Revealed, where I created an Astro Signature. Uh, used, first, I used the exploratory research to see what the angular distances are, what the harmonics are, what I just showed you. There it is, the same kind of graph that I showed you before. Actually, these features have been improved since I did this several years ago. Software is always improving. And I used the exploratory research. I came up with some ideas that made sense. I created an astro signature. And then I created an astro signature for what makes a musician, what makes a painter. And, and then I compared the results um, and I got positive results. So I came up with these different findings. Anyway, it's a very long article that describes it. So I'm giving you the idea of what you can do. You can create an astro signature for what you think makes somebody a painter or a musician, um, anything you want to do. And then you can even do a hypothesis test. So what you do in the astro signature research, let's go over to the astro signature research is you can go in here and you can do a t-test. You can save your results and then you can click on t-test. Well, I haven't saved any results yet, but it, you save the results after you run an analysis. You just click on save. The listing will be shown. You click on save. You can pick the result. You can then uh, compare what you saved from for two groups. So here's how it's done. Suppose you have an astro signature for what you think makes people a musician. Maybe you think Pisces is good for music or whatever you think it is, or Taurus or whatever you might think. You make that astro signature. You can explore the data and see if it seems to make sense. Then you can produce the astro signature that I just showed you for musicians and for athletes. Well, since it's a musician's astro signature, musicians should score higher then you run the t-test and it'll tell you the probability of getting those differences. So these t-tests can help you see how good your model is. Okay, I'm giving you a lot of information. If you're new to research, maybe um, this is a bit much. If you're familiar with these ideas, it all makes sense. But I'm almost done. <laughs> so you've, you're getting an overview of all of these very cool research features. The other research features um, that we have are compatibility where we do pairs, it's the same thing as for individuals, but you pair people up. 
So you take a husband and wife, or uh, if you do birth and death, it's a form of forecasting research. Um, so I will be making separate videos on this compatibility and pairs research for forecasting in the future. Um, it's too much to cover in one video right now, but I do want to tell you about the Astro Signature forecast because it's very, very powerful and very useful. Pairs research, um, there are not as many people using it, but the Astro Signature forecast research is fantastic, and I can't end this video without talking about it. Um, here's the kind of thing you can do. Here's an accident forecast for Princess Diana for three years, for 1996, 97, and 98. And here's the date where the car accident occurred and uh, she died. And based on this forecast of accident proneness, she dies right on a peak date. Over a three-year period, it's one of the highest peaks. So this is the kind of data visualization and exploration that you can do. You can create your formulas. You can visualize how well they're working. It's absolutely fantastic. You can also give this to clients so they, they have a clear visualization of what a forecast is. And it goes even further. If you have performance data, like a stock price, for example, you can graph the actual stock price which is the light green, is the actual stock price. The dark green is the predicted price based on our formula. And then it will even tell you what the correlation is and if that probability was less than 0.05 or less than 0.01, etc. So you can really test your ideas very, very detailed. So it's great for research at all kinds of levels. What we're doing now is we're doing uh, research on baseball batting performance, um, which is very exciting. We've, we've done it to predict gold prices, and we even replicated our findings with new data. So there's a paper here on the replication of the gold forecast data. To get to these papers, by the way, if you go to astrosoftware.com, click on articles and videos at the top, and then go to articles, you'll get here and number five is the one on the Galcoin data. And 20-something down here is the, um, the one on the gold price. Gold price, it's down here somewhere. Um, not this one, 30. It's here. I'm probably looking at it. Um, anyway, it's in here somewhere. You'll get to the... Uh, to the one on gold. Well, this is a little tedious, but if I search for the word gold, I'll find it. Um, repl oh, it's 41, Replication of the Gold Forecast Findings with New Data. So you can read those papers if you want to. Okay, I'm almost done. Back to the PowerPoint. Um, so I started to mention we're doing this research now on baseball batting performance, very exciting. And this is my last slide. Conclusions and summary. The bottom line is that there are research methods that make it possible for us to figure out how astrology works that are faster and um, more exciting than only using charts of your clients and friends and famous people, which is also important. Don't, don't, don't stop doing that. Very important. But you combine it with this kind of research and you're in a whole new world. So I'm at, what, 43 minutes. This video is going to be about 45 minutes long or so. So it's a pretty long video. But in less than an hour, I've given you an insight into how to do the research, what the methods are. You could watch this video a few times if you really want to get it, and you can start doing the research. If you want to get into this, just do it. Just get the software, start, click on Astro Signature Forecast, see what's in there, start playing with it. Um, there, there's now a conference every year in Florida, the Kepler Conference. The astrology organizations are now starting to get interested in this. So it's, it's a whole new world for some of you, but in, in less than an hour, I've given you a good introduction to it. So please don't feel intimidated or overwhelmed. In under an hour, I've given you a, you know, a, a perspective on this. Let's put it that way. Now, 
The last thing I want to say is that improvements in data collection, software, research methods, and astrological theory are transforming astrology from an ocean of anecdotal evidence to a modern discipline. We are moving from focusing almost entirely on model building to having a healthy balance of model building and model testing. This is revolutionary for astrology. So we are now moved, we have now moved into the 21st century information age by having these ways to visualize, explore, and the last thing I want to say, did you notice that most of these research methods require astrologers? They're not tying your hands. You're free to use all of your intuition and sensitivity to, to build these models, but they're, they're data-based models. They're evidence-based. There's no cherry picking. So um, very, very exciting. Okay, my friends, thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.